Hello and welcome back to the Let's Create a Game Engine series. I'm so glad you joined us. Today we're going to be taking a look at installing SDL with CMake, linking it, building it, and putting a window up on screen and setting up our game loop, or at least a basic game loop. So let's jump right in. So the reason we're going to use SDL is because I don't want to have to deal with super low level windowing code and input code you know windowing's not that bad but input code has to be some of the most annoying thing to set up in a cross-platform way especially once we talk about game pads and touch controls i don't want to have to deal with that sdl3 is the new sdl update it's used in the new source engine if valve's using it in their brand new engine i'm sure it's more than capable for us it's written in C, builds extremely quickly, has a lot of features we don't need, has a lot of features we could use. Um, we're basically only going to use it for its input and its windowing system. Let's us give it custom allocators. Uh, we can give it our own threading functions, our own IO functions. So it's not the biggest deal in the world. I know a lot of people who are making game engines on YouTube want to do it without any third party libraries. But using SDL has become my favorite way of starting things up quickly. Maybe one day I'll get rid of it. I do want the system to be a plugin based engine. And that way someone could create a plugin to get rid of SDL, their own windowing plugin. Um, so yeah, let's hop right into it. So far I opened up the SDL GitHub. I copied the link and here in CLion, I'm just going to init a Git repository and I'm going to just include SDL as a submodule because I think that's the best way to do it. Now, SDL as a submodule, I don't know where I should put it, but I think we can always move it around so it's not a big deal. I'm going to make a vendor directory at, at the top level because SDL is not going to be required. Um, the base library should have pretty much no dependencies um, and eventually the plugin system will be the thing that has the most dependencies so that we can move um, dependencies in and out depending on what the user wants so let's go into our new vendor directory let's just add this as a sub module if you've never done this before you just use git sub module add in the directory that you want paste in your github link click enter it's going to clone the repository into your folder and then it's super super easy to add this to CMake all we're gonna do is go here add a new subdirectory I'm gonna add SDL as a subdirectory which will make it get built along with the rest of these and then in the same way that we linked to base what we can do is link to SDL3 SDL3 um, we're going to reload CMake, should build, and then what we're going to do is just build it before um, doing any includes. So now we built SDL and it's connected to CMake, um, build finished successful. We're going to go into our main.cpp and we're just going to see if we can include it. After typing in this SDL.h, it found out that we're using this SDL3 folder. And it worked, so let's build it now. And it built successfully. And if you didn't see before, it built pretty dang fast for the size of project that it is. So some people don't want to take on huge dependencies, but since this project, SDL, was written in C, it builds so quickly that you don't even feel the dependency. All right, so here's what we're going to do for now we're just going to set up a basic game loop and eventually we're going to refactor it so what do we need for a game loop in sdl well let's remove this c code what we need is a few things we need an sdl window pointer well actually for now that's all we need so we're not going to do anything too crazy um the way you initialize SDL is with this command SDL underscore init and you give it flags. So init everything will enable everything that SDL has to offer. This is the way I'm going to do it. I'm putting these brackets because we're going to put this in a if statement. 
And we're just going to check to see if any error happens. So, uh, my bad. The way SDL and it works, if we look at its documentation, is it returns a zero on success and a negative number on failure. So if it does not equal zero, and we could we could also use the less than sign, this is the way I just always do it. We're gonna return negative two as our error code because we don't have any error code set up right now. And we're just gonna use their logger for now and say SDL failed to initialize. Now, usually it won't fail. So we pretty much don't have to worry. Let's take a look. It builds, exit code zero, perfect. Now, after we init SDL, we have to create the window. So we're gonna do window equals SDL underscore create window. And SDL three has changed things up a little bit. So now all you need is a title, a width, a height, and flags. So for the title, we're just gonna put game engine for the width, I'm going to do 1280. For the height, I'm going to do 720. And for flags, I'm going to put zero for now. Now, in order to be able to see the window, we have to create a little event loop. And the way this works in SDL is we'd have an infinite loop like this. We'll have a bool running equals true. And we'll do wall running. So this infinite loop will never end unless we give it a reason to. And that reason will be this. Every time we look at this loop, we're going to pull the SDL event loop and check to see if the user has clicked the X button. So if this is greater than zero, So what SDL poll events does is it looks at the operating system events and sees if anything happens. So that will be Xing out of a window or clicking on the keyboard or a gamepad. And what we do is after we poll for the events, so if there's an event, we're going to switch on the type of event. And we're going to specifically look for SDL event quit. This is also a new thing in SDL3. It's no longer SDL underscore quit. They added this little event in front of it. And we'll break. And literally all we'll do is say running equals false. And now we have a basic game loop. At the end, you know, we're using SDL so we can do SDL quit. And SDL destroy window. You don't really have to do these, but if you want to make sure that all your memory is being freed, this is how you would do it. So let's take a look at what happens now. We open it up and here we go. We have a window. Can't resize it just yet, but we do have a window. So in the next tutorial, we're gonna take a step back and we're going to start building up the base libraries. Um, we're gonna aim towards creating the plugin system first, just so that we can refactor our game loop and add this into um, a little window plugin instead of having win instead of having SDL just in our engine and yeah make it more optimized and see where things go thank you for watching like subscribe and I'll see you in the next one